This conference will now be recorded. Okay, guys. So today we are going to talk about the few of the basic agenda of software testing, right? If you are new about on the software testing uh, field, right? So it will be very useful for you to understand because you can see many tutorials available on the Google, many things available on the Google uh, for the beginner. But this uh, session will help out you to understand the concept from the scratch, from the diagrams itself, right? So before going to the uh, the practical bit of practical, uh, let me just tell you what is software testing, right? So you guys must be aware about the software testing is something you cannot define. This is the human behavior, right? When people are curious about the quality, quality of the product or quality of their requirement, they prefer to do to go with the software testing. So let me give you one of the example. Let's suppose if you want to buy a TV, right? So before buying a TV, you list down your requirement. What kind of requirement you have in your mind, right? And you go to showroom and you ask the 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 salesperson or the uh, the person who is uh, there in the showroom, right? You ask him, okay, I need a TV like this way. So this is similar to customer is coming to us to build a software, right? To build applications. Now, once we see the TV, once we check the screen size, resolutions, the volume, and the all those things, right? We ask the person, okay, give us a try. Just start the TV and just show us how the volumes is work, what is the display, how it's looking HD color channels, and all those things. So at that time, what we are doing, we are doing testing. We have the requirement, we asking to do the testing. So once it is matched to our requirement, then and then we're gonna buy. This is not about we do in the software side this is something we do in our real life as well right whenever we want to buy something we always have our requirement and we try to match up with the our expectation requirement to the actual requirement and then and then we go and buy that particular product right why then software testing is important like another questions will come into the mind right why software testing is important so there are many i i will say there are many example if you just go and google right you can find the the instance that has been caused the issue due to failure in the software there is one inst uh, instance in the uh, uh, nysc the new york stock exchange there is few issue with the amazon right where their uh, their uh, shopping cart got failed and the many customer uh, start getting the uh, the product in the only uh, only no, not the uh, customer the retailer the retailer was not able to sell their product correctly on amazon then there is a issue with the the uh, starbucks in the us right they have to shut down their 6000 store in the us because they found some failure in their uh, pos system the point of sale system right where they they make the billing so there are many examples which cause them uh, like the huge amount of failure like the many money loss and all those things the reputation loss and all those things so that's the reason people prefer to go with the testing part before going to the customer or launching the application to the production right now before going to the software testing let's we understand the basic concept right what are the types of software testing so i'm just going to give you the quick view right okay so over here over here what we will do just hold on let me just okay over here what we will do i will just show you what are the type of there are if you consider the types people are talk about many things so let's we talk about the type of software testing right so some of uh, some of people will say okay functional non functional right people says functional then people says non functional right so we will go with this one in our session so what is functional testing guys so i will consider the functional testing right the testing that you do the testing that you do with the functionality of the applications right now let me just tell you one simple uh, diagram okay we have one page we have one page right let's suppose that page has one logo right that page has one logo then what will it have it have some something i will just say is it has the username and password let's we consider the login page guys so it has the username and password username text box and password text box right then it has a simple on average this is login button then we will have the forgot 
password link right this is a, a simple structure of the login page so we have this page to test now simple one we have this page to test for our customer requirement right so i will consider the functional test so what is functional testing guys to test the functionality let's suppose if this login page has the url called login.php this is the url of this login page there is might be something on the domain and all those things right but at the end of the domain it says login.php so this is the uh the, this is the i will consider the page that we need to test so functional testing will be considered to test on many parameter the actual functionality that means if we if you are able to enter the correct username password and click on the login button right so it is focus on these things uh allow us to log in or not right then second things is forgot password link is clickable or not right then what else Okay. Sir, please repeat it again. Uh, can you uh, can you do one thing? I will ask you about the questions and answer at the end of the session. If it is fine, I I'm just recording this session, so it will be good. Okay, we will go with the uh, question answer and the last. You can just note it down your questions. Okay. So the next things that we gonna cover, uh, we we discuss about the functional part of the testing, right? If we will say says okay. If there is any criteria sir. for the username, right? Hello. Hello, sir. After complete session, it is uh, this video upload on your YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. I will also upload. But can you, as as per the rule, can you just be quiet on just keep the silence from your side, so it will be good for me. You got my point. Okay, I will record this you, session. I will send you the recording as well. And if you have any questions, we will go at the end of the session as well. So we will understand your your concept as well, okay? As other people are in mute, can you just mute from your side? Yeah, thank you very much. So the functional part will be covered. The login uh, working is fine or not? The forgot password link is working or fine or not? Right? Then we have another things like if, if there is something with the username, right? The username field, uh, the format. Or some expression we are giving like these are the minimum value you need to enter in the username then about the password right what should be the correct format of password so all those so all those things we uh, we do as a part of functional testing right we also verify we also verify the logo right not only logo the size of logo and the color of logo right so many things we will verify that is called the functional testing now what is non functional testing right so there are there, there are many things about non functional testing let's suppose we need to verify the security right after entering entering the username and password we need to verify the security if how it is going to be authenticate how it is going to give the authorization of this uh, that particular user on of our dashboard and all those things so that is called the security testing so that is part of the non functional testing guys right sometimes in the big applications they do the security testing with the third party uh, third party team itself they do the pan testing and all those things so they go through with the ip address verifications right the otp verifications and many things they do they just make sure that uh, the person who do not have the access of our application should not be able to log in or should not be able to access our application so for that they perform the security testing then what we else we can do we can do the performance testing right the performance testing means how quickly this login.php page is load the complete all is elements all elements on the web page right so sometimes the application is slow so it will take more than 10 seconds if it application in the normal range then it will take three to five seconds right so we also monitor those are timings how quickly it's going to be load on the screen so for that most of the time it is uh, not recommended to do the performance testing manually to be honest so for that people use the automation tool like jmetal and load runner and all those things but this is a part of performance testing we 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 calculate the performance of the application how is going going to be response to the user request right now 
it's not about just loading the page just loading the login page it's also about once user enter the username and password and click on login button how quickly it's load the dashboard page as well so everything will count as a part of the performance testing then what else okay now the scalability if we have this application is working fine right then is, is it scalable that means it, it, it is fine we can use this application on the other browsers on the other operating systems on all those things so that is count is scalability testing There are many other definition about scalability test testing. Sometimes people refer to the, the the product feature as well, right? If you want to increase the product feature, like if you want to add some new new uh, fields on the login page, then also they count as a scalable uh, scalable application or not. But in in my term, I will consider if the product is scalable. That means you are going to take the product from one level to another level, or you you want to make sure your product is compatible with the all type of operating system and the uh the uh, browsers right so that is also considered as a compatibility testing right so these are the different part of the functional and non-functional testing right so if you count in the functional testing there are you can consider the unit testing integration testing smock testing sanity testing and all those things are the part of the functional testing where in the non-functional on the top view you can consider the performance the load the stress and scalability testing right guys now this is a uh, simple you can consider the uh, the fundamental type of software testing but people also talk about few things that let me just show you i would just uh okay, just hold on i'm just going to delete this one then people also talk about the type of uh the techniques sometimes it is techniques but type or techniques of software testing so you must be have heard about that things the people says okay white box testing right and black box testing so guys what is white box testing and what is black box testing so first we'll talk about the black, uh, the white box testing right so in the white box testing what we have the tester right the tester should have knowledge of internal logic of the application tester should have the knowledge of internal application logic that means how the code is going to be executed right how the code is going to be executed if there is if else condition in the code right then it's for loop how the parameter is passing how the branch testing is going to be done right branch testing means how is going to be go with the if else condition and all those things so that is you can consider as a white box testing where the tester has the knowledge where the tester has the knowledge about the application logic and how it's going to be work so over here you can consider the tester is a kind of technical person right this can not be the person who has the non technical background so if you want to go with the good white box testing that means you have to have some uh, programming skill as well so you can understand the code not like a developer but yeah little bit that you can understand okay how it, the thing is going to be work so that is called white box testing guys now what is black box testing that you might might be aware about the black box test is uh, testing is coley work with the with the person who do not have the understanding about the internal logic right of the application that means how you can do the uh, black box testing you have the set of inputs right you have the set of input data on your excel file what you need to do once you get the application once you get the build from the developer it you just pass that input data and you observe the output right what is going to be output you do not bother or you do not concern about how the internal thing is going to be work right you just you have some things you have the expected out, uh, you have the expected outcome and you just measure with the actual outcome you just pass the data let's suppose in the login functionality right you have they have already given you okay what should be your input so you you have input should be the uh, enter the uh, email uh, enter the username enter the password and click on login button so this is your input parameter right and what should be the output expected output once you pass the valid information user should be log to or user should be redirect to the dashboard page so you have that things 
now you are not concerned how the authorization is going to be worked how the application is checked if the user is available on the user table or not right but when you do that uh, the white box testing at that time you have that knowledge as well how the different table is involved in the database right how the application if else condition is going to be worked if we provide the wrong username and password then what will be happen but over here you just work with the input data and the output uh, output uh, expected outcome okay so these are okay just over, let me just write it down so it will be good for you so tester should not have or tester should not have the idea about the internal logic most kind of bugs we found in the black box testing why because sometimes uh, there is myth in the in the testing world right you cannot find your mistakes even though if you are too good to do the testing but sometimes you forgot few things so that's the reason black box testing is very important because over there the tester work uh, behave like a customer like the non technical person and just go and just do the testing right so that's the reason that is called the black box testing over here the person do not have the idea about the internal logic right he has the set of input input data like you can consider the test data as well so like like in the login pages username and password right and he has the expected condition expected output so once it per execute the test case what it will do it will match up the expected output to the actual outcome what should be the actual output right if both are matched then it is passed both are not matching that means it is failed so this is how the black box testing works now people talk about okay what are the different types of black box testing we can do so there are three types equivalent equivalence class testing right if you guys are preparing to give the interview right then this can be the questions like what are the different techniques in the black box testing so you can just say equivalent class testing right then there is a boundary level a boundary boundary level value analysis boundary value analysis then there is a famous decision table right decision table you can do with your field right these are the different types of the black box testing and what should be the different type of white box testing i will just say statement coverage so we will go with the each in every statement of the code then we will go with the branch coverage right so you can just keep these two uh, techniques in your mind so if they will ask you okay what is the difference between black box and white box testing you can uh, just say the similar difference that you can see on screen what are the different techniques then you can also give the different techniques what are the white box testing and what is the black box testing okay guys so this is uh, the things that we need to be uh, go through about the type of testing in my next session i have a few things to cover but in my next session i am just going to talk about more detail on the different uh, type of testing like sanity and regressions and smock testing like what is load testing stress testing and all those things but i need to uh, i need to make this session really quick for you guys so i can cover more topics right so now the next topics will be the level of testing right sometimes people get confused what with the level and the types right level of testing so let me just tell you one things right let's suppose customer come up come up with the one application funder right customer says i need to build this application right so you says okay you need to build this application it's going to take a uh, one month right one month time and i will build this application for you right so customer says okay then you just build this application for me in one month now what you will do as a project manager right as a project manager or what project manager do normally they bifurcate they make sure this application going to be divided in different chunks right because each and application cannot be the with the uh, same functionality it has different modules it has different things to cover right so what it will do there a uh, few are complex few are easy to implement few are lengthy as well few are time consuming so based on that based on those parameters the project manager task is to divide the application in small small unit right so that is part of the small small unit now suppose it has uh, it has the three developers right it has a team of three developers and one tester right so what it will do let's suppose if you got if you got the 
six modules out of these applications six different modules right six different modules of one application after doing the requirement analysis right he identify okay this can be the six module i can divide my application so now what it will do it has the six module over here so, right so i will just say module one let me just take a copy so it will give the good view why i drew the diagram because it's always easy for you guys to remember this is how when i was learning i was learning like the same way because when we see something on visually right it will be very easy for us to understand so now what the uh, lead has did he has divided the application into the six modules right so what you can see over here now there are six modules so this application is divided into different six modules right so now i have the developer one developer one right i have the developer one then i have the developer two two then i have the developer three right i have the three developers with me right so what our project manager did it divide the workload to three developers right then this is the responsibility of developer one to finish these two tasks right now developer one will work on these two tasks and once it is finished his work he will upload his code to the git or anywhere right if it is a uh, there is some source code control management they are going to use so these are the task is going to be divided right so now what it will happen so i will just say uh unit one right this can be the unit one this can be the unit two unit means modules guys never get confused if somebody says uh, unit testing that means module testing you are going to test each and every chunk of your application so you need three right you need three then you will have after unit three what you will have just okay after unit you have unit four then you have unit five and unit six so you have six units means six modules that you have you go you are going to be developed in this application right now suppose we have a time of one month right so after one week the developer finished the two things right so i'm just going to mark as green so developer finished this one and developer finish this one as well right so he says okay my both the module is fine so now what i need to do i need to make sure if there is any internal dependency right is there any dependency between unit one and two so if there is any dependency as a developer what i will do i will implement i will implement the code so what it will it will become it will merge these two application it will merge these two uh, two modules i would not say two application two modules so that will become the another level of modules over here right so this will become the two modules right so this is how the three developers will work they will make sure any internal dependency is going to be work or not so this is called a uh, unit one plus two right this is unit one plus two then you need this is unit uh unit three plus four right and similar way this is unit five and six right so now okay these three testers work together and this is okay my all the uh, all the units are working independently good as well as after working together that means integrated to each other and it is also working too good so what the project manager will ask okay do one thing merge your all the code right merge your all the code and make it complete systems for our customer so we can show to our customer right so now i am just going to mark this green right now what will happen guys over here right the governor says okay everything is working fine green marks is go over here everything is working fine everything is working fine right so these things is working fine now so what they the devil uh, the pro, uh, manager told okay merge your code and put in the in complete system so i have the one my complete system over here right which contains six modules right which contain these six units right so different units is over here different unit is over here but now they are not a unit they are working as a complete systems they are working with internal functionality as well as they are working independently good so that's the reason it is called complete system right so now if once this is start working fine right what we will do we will call the customer and we'll show this our system to customer right so now let me just show you these are the level of testing so this is called unit testing 
at the bottom that is called unit testing that means you test each and every component independently right you test each and every component independently how they are matching matching with the uh, requirement of the application then once each and every component start working good you merge that component that is called integration testing right and if you remember this hierarchy right it will be very easy for you to answer the interview questions also it, it will never confuse you between the type of testing and level of testing right so this is called integration testing now over here we are merging all the modules all the application and all the unit test case and all those things so that is become system testing right that is become system testing now after that what we are going to do once the system is ready we are going to call the customer and we do the one to one with the customer like we will show our application to customer for the approval before going to release the product to the production we need to we need to take a customer uh, approval that is called uat that means acceptance user acceptance testing right so this is the fourth level most of the time you can also consider as acceptance testing right not the user but is a acceptance testing that is called the fourth level so these are the different level guys these are the different levels of the software testing okay so what are the different levels guys the first one will be the unit test then integration test right then system test then what we will have uat means you can consider the acceptance that means user will or the customer will accept as the application then and then you release on the production so these are the different types right these are the different types of testing I'm sorry these are the different level of testing guys always remember these things they this going to be asked in the interview if you are uh, going to apply as a manual tester they will definitely ask you okay what are the different level of testing but if you are uh, want to upgrade yourself in the automation then it's also good you should have this knowledge right when you start working with any project or any company now what is the next topic the next topic we will discuss about the hdlc right so what is hdlc guys right the hdlc that means hdlc that means software development life cycle right now there are many definition about the software developer life cycle right but i will show you in the unique way right so suppose you have the customer right you have the customer which come up with the requirement so i will just write down over here manually right it says customer came with requirement to company or to organization right so over here we are representing the company customer can be the requirement to the company and over here see guys how the thing is going to be linked over here i am just going to draw another block right that means it says the company company deliver the requirement to customer in term of app application right so this is the things that we normally we also have the idea right how the thing is going to be work if you want to develop any software right what we will have the customer says okay i need to develop the application like this we like the amazon.com or ebay.com or the simply learn.com edureka.com right and after that what will happen the customer will give the requirement and company will send the company will uh, develop the product and make sure it's cover all the requirement and it says customers okay everything is ready and this is your requirement done in the term of the applications but be between these two phase guys between these two phase right there are many activities happens right so let's we go to that those activities so what will happen once we have the requirement from the customer that our internal team like project manager senior people and all those will come together and what they will do they will do the requirement analysis right they will do the requirement analysis so this is a first phase guys requirement analysis this is a first phase of the this is a first phase of the uh, sdlc where we do the requirement analysis and this is very crucial phase guys 
because over here once we make sure we have the proper requirement we have the correct requirement then and then we can ask our technical staff to start working right so over here most of the time the senior people get involved the business analyst people get involved the project manager and all those things so they what they will do they analyze the requirement they do the feasibility study right they will go back with the customers if they have any doubts they will clear the doubts and all those things right so over here they will also do one thing they will just say clear the doubts the clear the doubts from customer if they have because customer is nothing like uh, that means the customer do not have clear about the requirement but it may be possible sometimes they are not aware about the feasibility of the implementation right so at that time what we will do we do the requirement analysis if we have any questions any doubts on the requirement we go back to customer we can we confirm okay this is what you want or not right so that is called requirement analysis now once the requirement is fixed right then the next part will come that is the product designing right so i will just say it says this designing of product or designing of application this is the designing phase guys so over here what will happen the business analyst team will create the wireframe the actual designer right we will we will has the different designing technique like the html and css and all those things so they will design the uh, format of the how the web page will look like and what should be the login page will look like dashboard page will look like right so all those things they will design right and once the designing is over right from the designer point of view they ask the developer the actual coder the programmer right so they're going to use the language so it says development of application so over here guys what will happen right over here who will be the um, main body who will be the main body i will just say project manager uh just hold on let me just make it a bit wider okay so it says project manager senior people right who will do this requirement analysis the qa lead and all those things right the developer lead and all those things right so they will do the requirement analysis there are many they mostly have good experience to understand the requirements so they do these things over here over here we will work the designer right that means ui ux designer i will consider ui ux designer right we will come consider over here they will do the designing they will use html or bootstrap or css right these are the different uh techniques that they're going to use and they will create the designing over here the actual programmer right the programmer is going to be introduced they will use the different esp.net right or java or python anything right python or java any programming language they will use and they will create the application they will write the actual code of the application now after these things we come into the picture the tester right so once we come into the picture right what we will do we start testing on the requirement right the testing of of application right so over here what we will do we will come into the picture we start testing which is okay how many user stories we have which is 100 user stories you need to test right so we will test one by one if it is failed then the defect life cycle is coming to the picture what we will do we will have the new new requirement we test is if there is any bug we raise the bug to the developer developer fix the bug then they give us to retest the bug and if it is fine if it is working fine in the after fixing the application we mark as close if it is not working fine then we reopen the bug and we again allocate to the developer so this cycle we go on and on till the time we will not see 100 test case passed on this stage once we will have 100 test case pass i means 100 test case requirement is passed then and then what we will do we will go to the next phase now the next phase will be the deployment that means we are going to deploy let me just make it a bit wider we are going to deploy right so i will just say deployment or on the production right so it just says deployment on the production on server production server for the customer so like this way it's going to be work this is a unique this is a simple structure of hdlc requirement analysis designing development testing deployment and give it to the customer but 
between this testing and deployment we will conduct one more things one more layer that is called uat right before releasing before releasing our application to the customer we will do the uat testing that's the reason sometimes they will ask you in the interview have you been a part of the uat testing so you need to say yes because what will happen in the uat testing we have the product is ready to go on the production but before launching to the production what we will call we will call the customer okay we will say okay let's we have two to three hour session we are ready to launch the application on production but before that we want to go one to one with each and every requirement we will show you how we have implemented the requirement and then if they will says okay good to go then and then we can release on the production this is a standard practice guys you have to have do with the ut testing right so once customer says yeah everything seems to be fine you can release this particular product on the production then what developer lead do they will create the release note and all those things and they will circulate the release note to the internal and the customer for their point uh, just for a reference so they can come to know okay what points they have implemented and how the thing is going to be work so that is called uat testing so that will come after once the tester once the tester finish their testings and once they say is good to go at that time the unit testing will come into the picture guys right this is not something we do at the time of the at the time of the uh, our actual testing that is done post testing activity uat testing should be the post testing activities now guys this is called sdlc now let me just write down it says requirement analysis right requirement analysis then we will have designing phase development phase then we have testing phase then i will consider the uat phase this is a unique from my side you cannot see this definition in the google but this is something i will prefer from my experience it should be the part of these things you can consider as a part of testing as well but uat will be there then deployment on server and then after if is there any contract maintenance maintenance activity right most of the time maintenance and support you have seen the maintenance support profile people work on the maintenance of the application on the server so these are the core structure of the sdlc guys now what will be your core team sometimes they will ask you okay or can you just describe about about your team size so you can say i am working on the pro, i am working on the one project which has the one project manager right which has four developer two tester this is a core project team one designer one or two designer right designer one business analyst person right then i will just say okay we, yeah that, that that's good you can consider these are the normal project structure project manager developer tester designer and business analyst team this is the normally part of the project team right so if somebody ask you okay who are in the project team you can just say describe like this way and this uh this all people will come into the picture in the different stage of the sdlc right so this is called software development life cycle now there are two models let's be discuss about the two models real bit quickly are uh, two models like the waterfall model for model and the agile model okay right? so waterfall model and agile model both follow the sdlc they both follow the sdlc right but how the waterfall model is going to be work it is going to be work on one phase at a time right so it says just hold on it says okay it says requirement analysis right it has once requirement analysis then once a requirement analysis finish it says designing once designing is finished it's a development it's once the development is finished it says testing and once testing is finished it says deployment right so you see this waterfall model is the very old technique guys when people work as a freelancer right they follow this model why because when you work as a freelancer you need to fix the requirement with the customers because once you fix the requirement with the customer right then and then you can say okay i will take 6 month and this this uh, this amount of your project and all those things so these these are the very old structure where we do not allow customer to modify the requirement once it is get fixed right and if you see 
if you see the hierarchy if you see the structure of these things it says water is falling from one state to another state you see water falling that means it is going to be once it is going to be done with the requirement phase you cannot go be, go back to the previous phase once this is done that means it's done right once you finish your designing once you take a sign up from the customer okay this is the designing we have done and customer says okay good to go and you finish the designing phase right so that means once you finish once you're done with the your uh, your one uh, one phase right you cannot go back to another uh, you cannot go back simple you have to go like a water you need to go on the upfront you cannot go back right that means once you finish your development right and you just you just say to the customer okay this is the development we have finished now we are moving to the testings then again there is there can be a chances that developer and tester work some back and forth right because if there is any bug right then you need to solve that bug before going to the deployment so there there may be a chance you need to fix the bug and all those things but you cannot alter the requirement you cannot modify the designing stuffs and all those things you only authorized to fix the bugs that is called the waterfall model right you work at the uh, one phase at a time so what is the advantage why we use the waterfall model first things it very easy to under, understand and maintain right because your team is focusing on only one one modules or one phase at a times so it will be very easy for people to understand and maintain the milestone and and uh, you are working at the one phase at a time that means you are giving your all the concentration on one phase so it may be possible you are going to be create a good quality product but what are the limitations the limitation is that sometimes the requirement gets changed as per the market trend right let's suppose if you have started your uh, building requirement on the january right but uh, till till of the june or july the many things will effect in the business effect in the market so maybe possible the product that we are going to develop right it has some change in the requirement some new rules from the governments or some new rules from the market so at that time it effect it effect the customers and the uh, project our uh, product team as well another disadvantage i will consider the limitations you will get the testing the tester it need to sit alone they need to wait the actual product to be complete right so over there the testing the actual outcome the feedback from the testing will come too late right so suppose if you have requirement so what tester will do based on the requirement they will create their testing in uh, test plan and test cases and all those things but they have to wait a long once the complete product is developed once the all the 100 modules are developed then and they they will get the chance for testing right this is not something they will get a chance on initial stage so this is the limitation again this is not good for the resource utilization right sometimes uh, as a company you want your all the resource to be work on the every day on their project right but over here sometimes you find a few of the resource will not be able to work because they are just waiting for a work from the previous phase so that is again not good for the resource utilizations right so that is the waterfall model now the the overcome of the few limitation of the waterfall model right what we will have we will have agile models so how the agile model will work in the agile model there are few things will work on continuous basis right in the iteration you can consider the agile model will work on the iteration iteration or you can also consider the incremental or or sprint right iteration or sprint they will work on the iteration on sprint so what will happen in the agile model everything that we have discussed right the hdlc the requirement analysis right they will do the requirement analysis then we will do the designing then they will do the development then they will do the testing and they will do the deployment over here this is not the like a waterfall this is the sequential uh, right this is the sequential this is going to be work like this way you see the hierarchy this is going to be work like this way once the requirement analysis finished designing development testing deployment then again requirement analysis that means you follow this iteration for every based on the requirement every 2 month or 3 month that is called iteration right 
every two months and three months. That means it's give the customer that if there is any change in the requirement, they can notify their requirement change in every sprint or every iteration, right? So this is the very popular models that now 85% of company use the agile model, right? Because over here that it's give the feasibility to customer to change their requirement and it also give the advantage of the uh, product development team that they can do the testing continuously once the let's suppose if you have 100 requirement let's suppose if you have total product with the 100 100 requirement right 100 points of requirement this is your product complete product right so what you will do you will take 20 requirement on the first phase so in the iteration one you will take 20 requirement right you you are not going to wait till all the 100 requirement is finished and you do the testing so in the first iteration you will take the 20 requirement in another iteration you take the another 20 requirement right and once you finish this requirement you give the uh, you give the developer to test these things you got my point you give the developer to test these things so this is how you divide your overall functionality and you allow customer to do the changes right so that's the reason it says the agile uh, testing is something agile methodology it's something preferred over the waterfall or other techniques because it's a good model if you have any changing requirement it can be easily adoptable right and yeah so this is about the agile model uh, agile methodology now what is the disadvantage of this model i would just say from my experience it's only one disadvantage is that if you want to work in the agile you need to work on continuous basis right so this is a bit complex model to manage there are many things you need to adopt like the uh, scrum master like scrum meetings the uh, sprint meetings the all those things you need to be aware about each and every terminology right if you want to work on the agile model right so that's a I will just say not the limitation, but it's good for it. It cannot be for the uh, everybody. You have to be uh, understand the SDLC completely to work in the agile methodology. So these are the two models: the waterfall model and the agile model and the SDLC. Right now, guys. Another thing is that STLC, right? The software test life cycle. So once I will just STLC, right? Software test life cycle this is the part this is the detail modules if you just say sdlc right sdlc says requirement analysis designing development testing and deployment so over here in the testing phase right in the testing phase what we required we need to bifurcate the testing phase in the stlc so over here the stlc will come into the picture so how i will give some more focus on stlc why in the stlc what we will do we will have different stages so over here we will do the requirement analysis but the requirement analysis in stlc is for test creation it's respect to testing not about the project we will do the requirement analysis for the testing right what we will do we identify the different type of test that we we going to perform we will create the requirement traceability matrix right over here we create the rtm uh, document so that is a part of the requirement traceability matrix the requirement analysis and once the requirement is done what we will do we will do the test planning right we'll do the test planning so what we will happen in the test planning guys we will select the tools tool selection will come over here what kind of tools going we are going to use for the test auto uh, test management not the automation the management like the jira or alm and all those things we'll go with the test effort estimation how much time we will going to be required for this particular project testing right then what we will else will do okay is there any training that we required for the, our testing team training requirement we will discuss training planning right so all those things will come under the test planning then the next thing is that test case designing or development right so this is what the most of most of the time tester will do they create the designing they create the test case based on the requirement and the planning right so they create the test case cases on excel or whatever the uh, whatever the preferred tool they have selected right they will review the test case right they will create the test data which data we need to use for testing so all those things they will do at the test case designing 
or test case development you can see and once this is done what you will do you can go with the test environment setup right test environment setup so what you do in the test environment setup you ask your it team and just says okay we need one uh, one system one machine or one laptop right one machine with the basic configuration we do not have any software any development software we do not have should not be the part should not should not be installed right like the uh, uh, visual basic and all those things you should not be installed in this machine because they want to be a simple and sober machine that our customer is going to be used so that is called test uh, case uh, test environment setup then at the last what will come it will come test closer test cycle closer right so just test closure so over here what you will do you test reporting right test test reporting and this test summary to the management all those things will come under the over here so this is the part of the stlc software test life cycle guys requirement analysis you also do in the software test life cycle because any life cycle you do you need to have to have requirement analysis right so all those things you will do now each and every phase each and every phase has two things they have the entry criteria and exit criteria right that means if you want to complete this stage and you need to enter this stage right if you need to enter this stage then you need to have entry criteria means once the requirement is successfully done and the rtm document is created then and then you can go to the test planning you cannot go to the test planning that means entry point for the test planning is that you should have rtm document created right and what is the exit point for the test planning that means you should have tools selected you should have team effort estimated you have training plan properly what kind of training you require once you have those things in your hand then and then you can say okay test planning is done now you can go to the next level that is called test case designing and when what is the test case designing uh, input entry criteria you should have rtm document you should have proper uh, tool selected you have the effort estimated once this thing is done then and then you do the test case de designing right and once you create the test cases then and then you can go with the test environment right before sorry i'll just hold on before this test closer right there is one more says okay my bad over here there is one more things you says test execution that is very crucial so whatever the test case you have created right you execute the test case once you get the build from the developer right you get the build from the developer you execute the test case which you have developed and you send your requirement you should just says okay this is my uh this is bugs we have raised this is passed or failed or anything right so all those things you will give to them so this is again the sorry the test execution phase right then bug raising and actual testing this is one of the phase as well of the sdlc right so this is also done so this each and every phase is go like this way each and every phase is go like this way right once this is done and once this is done over here over here you used over here in the text execution you you use the same test case that you have designing in the test case designing right but you over here you just make it pass or fail so this is called stlc guys right just make sure if they will ask you in the interview explain like this way this will give you the full marks right each and every phase has entry live entry criteria and exit criteria right so it's depend you can see the whatever i have written over here that are the entry and exit criteria for each and every phase so what is the entry criteria for test case designing whatever the exit criteria of test planning right they work on the hierarchy guys so always remember these things now the next thing is that defect life cycle right so defect life cycle fall under these things test executions we will go to next screen but i want you to make sure defect life cycle will work on this text execution when you execute the test cases 
at that time you need to talk about the fake life cycle right now let me just tell you what will happen okay over here we have the developer and over here we have the tester right so it just says developer okay now understand guys you understand once it will help you the lifetime because this is the process that all the organization follow this is a developer this is a tester right so what will happen like they have some test management tool test management tool right i will just say zira or i will just alm anything they are going to use to tackle the all the requirement and all the bugs and all those things right so what will happen let's suppose because uh, the developer uh, create the first build right then what they will do they will send the build to tester to test right so over here what is happening guys developer sent build to tester to test right now what is happening in this world build that means version in this version 1.0 they have implemented 13 points means 13 requirement right 13 requirement they have implemented right now what will happen the tester will start testing the tester will start testing i will just write down the developer wall and this is a tester wall now what will happen the tester has write down they have started testing and they found some bugs right in this state 13 point they says okay uh, 25 out of 30 25 is passed and 5 is filled 5 are filled right so whatever the failing whatever the failed requirement right whatever the failing over here this is okay we have created five bugs we have created five bugs for this five failed test case understand guys so once this will done what will happen this will go back to the developer now developer what will developer do the developer will refer those five bucks right they will refer those five bucks they will focus not on that 25 now they only focus on this five bucks right five test cases which got failed now what they will do they will say says okay we have uh, work on it and we have fixed it they will resend to the tester to test it so what will happen again now over here it is go over here it just says just hold on it's again go to the tester from the developer right it just says uh, just hold on it is opening like this way okay over here it says okay five bug is five bugs are fixed right you can retest so it is going to be says you can retest and what they are going to do they are going to mark that bug point the bug id as resolved or fixed right the bug status should be fixed over here over here in the first place the bug status will be open or new new bug or open right over here this is fixed or resolved right now what will happen tester will retest the functionality and if they will found okay everything is good to go and everything is working found then they will close the they will close the bug from their side right they will just says okay if everything is fine then this bug is closed right everything is fine fine that means 13 out of 13 are working fine and if anything is not working still not working then they will reopen reopen the bug for the tester to uh, for the developer to work again and this cycle will go on this cycle will go on till the time they will not found each and every requirement is fixed and each and everything is done you got my point so this is how the defect life cycle work right so now i will give you the another view so i will just say once the tester will found a bug they will raise the bug that is called a new bug right and once it is got assigned to any developer it says open status 
open status right these are the different status once developer will start working on that that is in progress once developer fix it it says fixed one tester will test it right and if it's uh, testing phase test testing phase if they will find any issue they will ask they will go to the again just hold on then it will go to the again to this one in progress status right they will just says okay this is not fixed we need to they will just says okay reopen debug now once they will work on again and what they will do they will give for the retesting so this is okay everything is fine you go and do the testing again right so at that time what they will do they will not do they will just use their word this word you're gonna use retest retest the bug right and if everything is fine this is okay everything is resolved closed right and if something is goes wrong then they will reopen the bug again so this is a general cycle of the defect life cycle right sometimes there are many other uh, other uh, the phase will become like new open fixed pending for retesting then retested verified reopened closed there are the different like sometimes you find a duplication in the bug so you can also consider the duplication you have in your in your uh, particular uh, applications right so these are the things you normally talk when you when you go with the defect life cycle right you need to complete the cycle till the time everything is work as per the requirement right okay so this is the defect life cycle now what is next the next is thanks test cases and test scenario right so let me just give you the i will show you the even my format i have created for one of my customer right so the test case that means you are going to write each and everything in the details so you can verify your requirement right where the test scenario that means it's a high level of document or high level of description what is going to be tested right so suppose if you are on this login page right let's suppose if you i am just going to give you the demo link uh, okay so you, if you are on a, this login page right that means you are going to test you are going to test this particular application right that means i need to verify the flight booking flight booking scenario that means this is a one liner description right file uh, flight booking scenario now what is test case content test case will contain each and every steps you take to complete that test scenario that is called test case okay so test case is a set of actions that you need to execute to verify particular functionality is work working fine or not so what the good test case content this is one of the interview questions guys they will ask you okay have you created the test case previously or in your current work you just says i am i am the part of the test case creation that is means test case development if you remember guys the part of the sdlc you are the part of the sdlc sdlc that means test case designing yes i have designed the test case i know how to create a test case so they will ask you the next next question what should be the uh, what should the good test case look like so what should parameter you should include in the good test case so you, you will should say i will keep the test case id i will keep the test case creation date who created the test case any post condition any pre condition what what the test steps i need to follow what should be the my expected result what should be the, my actual result right each and everything i will keep in my test case you got my point so if they will ask you this question answer like this way i will show you one scenario here you see to to verify the login test right this is my simple uh, uh the test case i have created so over here you can see the test scenario verify all functionality on login page right or you can also mention verify the functionality of login right so over here you see the few things you need to make sure so over here the date of creations version modules right test and name approved by date of execution total steps past steps failed steps module lead test start date test end date and how like this way if you see over here over here i have the uh, just hold on okay you see on this particular login in in this particular login page right if i want to test this login page i can see two things one is login functionality and another things i can 
uh, i can add all other things like this buy now button this tax this logo this button over here and another thing is code login functionality so you see over here i have bifurcated in this two way verify the different element on the login page verify the logo verify the automation text verify the buy now button verify the footer text verify the link text and all those and other things verify the login functionality right that's mean enter valid username click on login button enter invalid username click on login button what should be the, my prerequisite right so user should be on the login page you need to verify if user is on a login page or not right then what test data i need to use so for uh, valid username and password you need to use this username and password for invalid you need to use this one and what should be the error message display this is the error message should be display this is my expected result what should be the actual result and what should be the status and what should be the comment you see over here if something is failed i create the bug we raise the bug right if something is failed each and every failed case should have the bug id link right that is a part of the good testing if anything fail always raise a bug right keep this habit when you work or this raise to the develop because our main goal as a part of tester right to maintain the quality of the pro, uh, quality of the application so whatever bug or whatever issue we will find always go and raise it and always raise so you can also have your your track you can also uh, confirm okay this is the things is going to be work right so again guys the test uh, the test scenario will be the uh, one liner description the high level idea about what we need to test where the test case that means it contains the detailed steps what information we require to do the detail level of testing for that particular functionality right so the test scenario mainly focus on what to test rather than how to test this is one of the uh, good uh, says in the software testing world the test scenario is focus on what to test rather than how to test where test case is focus on what to test rather than how to test right so this is the things you need to be available uh, you need to make sure between the test scenario and the test case it may be sometimes they will ask you the difference as well what is the difference between the test scenario and test cases so you can just say the test scenario contains the high level of documentation which described each and every functionality to be tested right where in the test case you contain detailed steps which is going to be tested for that particular functionality then another thing that i told you right the test scenario focus on how to test now sorry the test uh, scenario will focus on how to test right and over here in the test case we will focus on how to test rather than what to test again the test scenario is the high level of actions document where the test case is the low level of action document right so these are the things that i need to uh, cover in this particular session right so now you can just unmute yourself and you can just ask me any questions you have guys right we will make sure in the next session we will take the uh, we will take the few topics from from you your side so stay connected i have few of the online preference right i have my youtube uh, youtube channel i have created my facebook page called slt learning so follow me over there i have my blog as well you can see the blog about i am just writing few of the blog i have already written the blog for the automation the selenium and the test ng and all those things so you can visit my blogs slt learning i will give the links on the my video once i will upload on the youtube you can also visit my youtube channel right <coughs> and you can subscribe you can see the recent uh, the webinar i have done on the automation side there are two webinar i have done on the automation side which described about the automation like the selenium what are the different uh, useful uh, things we need to learn on the selenium so after learning the manual stuff right if you want to learn the selenium you can refer me these two sessions that i have done for the many attendees right git i have explained each and everything how the git is going to be work what is the selenium web driver what is pom.xml what is the page object model what is cucumber bdd api testing database testing i have covered each and everything in that session so just refer those video as well if you are planning to learn the automation okay so anything else guys i can help you out if any questions okay so let's we do one thing let's we keep this session as of now and once i will upload this video and i will send the link to you guys 
but you can also search on the uh, the YouTube SLT learning right you will find this channel so over there you will find that video in after one hour right so you can just refer that video as well if you like my session just subscribe to my channel and I will come up with the with the more session like this way you can also suggest a topic in the in the comment box if you want any specific topic to be learned I will create some videos and I will try to come up again like this way and we will have the another session okay so thank you very much guys for giving your time to me to uh, describe what I have thought about these topics and if you have any specific topic you can write write down to me you can see my channel name my blog detail over there you can also follow me on the Facebook as well we can stay connected in each and every channel thank you very much guys and take care bye just alone okay perfect yeah thank you